Hi everyone, another plumbing query for you that's going to be sorted today hopefully um, is how to isolate a radiator, especially in the, you know, the problems you get when you get a leak sometimes and sometimes the valves leak and you need to actually isolate the radiator from the system. Fairly simple, now on the front of this one here, on one end we've got this thermostatic rad valve. Now you may have a thermostatic rad valve or you may have a turn type of valve um, but either way we've just got to do the same thing. This, I mean this should be a lock shield really but it's a turn valve and we're going to turn it off like so. And if you've got that sort of valve, just keep going clockwise till it reaches the air, it's off. And obviously with a thermostatic one, uh, you just turn it all the way uh, until it reaches zero and that is also off. All right, so if you've got either of those two of valves on one end of your radiator, you've got to turn them off. Now, I'm gonna show you now what you'd normally get on one end of the radiator as far as that you should have a lock shield valve. So I'm gonna go to that now. At the other end of your radiator, you'll find a valve like this. It's called a lock shield. And if you try and turn it, it just spins around. It doesn't actually turn it off. Just pull it and it will come away. As you can see, there's no locking device in it to turn the valve off at all. That's quite deliberate. It's to allow the valve to be set to balance the system out. Um, you may not have that type. You might have this type of valve on there. Top, I mean, uh, with a screw in it. Uh, and if you have got the screw in it, just undo the screw and pull it off. There's several different types, quite a few. You could have someone like that with a screw in it again. Undo the screw. They use your Phillips and just pull the top off. Once it's off, um, you've revealed the head of the valve, which we're now going to turn off with a pair of pliers. Right, so with our pliers, we attach on there. You can use a little shifting spanner if you want on there. Again, whatever you've got, to, to turn it round and round till we get to the off. We're nearly off there, and just keep going, that's it, that is actually off. When you can't turn it anymore, that's off. This radiator now is, is isolated, that is, no flow can come in either end, um, so it is kind of dead now, um, and you can do whatever you want to it now. If there is a leak, um, you can put a little saucepan or something under leak, um, but if, if you want it to, to stop dripping all together and let the leak run out, you will need to release an air valve on the end of the radiator just to let the air in and allow the water out if it is leaking and you'll always find the air key on the top of here um, just open it up with a little air key and the water will come out the leak uh, in the middle of the rad or wherever your leak happens to be uh, and eventually it will stop but uh, obviously you need a little receptacle under the leak catch all the water and, uh, and that will be it until you get your new radiator uh, and then replace it. I've got a video on replacing a radiator, how to do it, so uh, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> so if you do need to isolate a radiator, uh, that is how to do it and that's the most common types of valves. So that's how you do it. No problem mate, easy. <laughs> Alright, all my videos, you know where to go, Derrickon33.com. Thanks for watching everybody, bye bye.